Welcome to Hope Sabbath School, an in-depth, interactive study of the Word of God. I'm glad you joined us today as we continue an important series of studies on Christ and His law. It could be so complicated, but Jesus makes it so simple and so life-changing. I'm glad you joined us for the topic today, Christ and the Law in the Sermon on the Mount. I want to welcome our Hope Sabbath School team. It's good to be together again, isn't it? Amen. And what a great series of studies. My life's been changed. I'm singing the scripture song as I'm walking around. And I know these principles of truth can not only bless us, but the lives of those around us. And we're excited today because we have one of our team that's going to teach. I'll be introducing Stephanie in just a moment. But it's wonderful to see God equipping us to teach the word. We're also delighted to hear from you, our Hope Sabbath School members around the world. You can write to us at sshope at hopetv.org. Even if you've written before, write and share how you're growing in the Lord, how you're sharing the truths that you've learned. Here's a note from Hannibal in Tehran, Iran. And Hannibal writes and says, I watch Hope Sabbath School every day except Saturdays in Tehran with my friends and my mother. I want to thank you again for your wonderful Bible teaching program. May God richly bless you in Jesus Christ. Amen? Amen. Amen. Thanks for writing to us, Hannibal, from Tehran in Iran. God bless you. May God bless your country. Continue to lead you uh, into truth. Here's a note from Nombeko in South Africa. And Nombeko writes and says, I am truly humbled by your in-depth discussion of Hope Sabbath School. I watch from my laptop, and I must mention that I am still intrigued. Amen. <laughs> That's interesting. I truly enjoy the different inputs, especially because the group seems to be diligent scholars. Amen. Well, God Praise helps God. us as we pray and study the Word. But uh, thank you, Nombeko, for writing to us from South Africa. Here's a short note from Elias in Malawi. Elias, thanks for writing. He says, first of all, I want to thank God for his blessings on me to be able to view Hope Sabbath School. Amen. I'm a regular viewer for every Friday and Sunday. And every time I watch, there is revival and reformation in my life. Amen. Wow. <laughs> this has really helped me to improve uh, when I share things in my own Bible class. Amen. That's what we're praying. It's my hope that one day we'll meet in heaven and share the good news together as one family. God bless you all. Amen. Well, God bless you, Elias. Great to hear from you from Malawi there in the heart of Africa. Here's a note from Arina in Poland. She actually wrote in Polish, and we use the Google Translator. <laughs> I do not know English. I use Google Translator. I watch Hope Sabbath School every Saturday. I am very glad that such a study is available. May God continue to guide you in this activity. God's blessings, Irina. Well, thanks for taking the time to write to us in Polish, Irina. And we're glad that you're able to hear the message. That's why we try to speak clearly and let the Word of God speak. We're glad there's a Hope Sabbath School presence there in Poland. And one last note from Wisconsin in the United States of America. And Wendy writes and says, I look forward to Hope Sabbath School every morning. So she's watching our Daily Hope program, which is a daily broadcast. As a widow, I saved up money to buy a Christian satellite for a couple of years. Then I had to find someone to install it, and no one would come to my area to do it. Hmm. Well, after more than a year, the Lord provided a new friend who was willing to try to set it up with his two computer-knowledgeable sons. But there were problems. <laughs> but it was a day of celebration when the picture finally came on. Mm -hmm. My life is a joy now, learning with Hope Sabbath School. Your program is an answer to my prayers. Amen. Amen. Isn't that beautiful? I get up at 5 o'clock every morning to watch Hope Sabbath School, and I leave for my job at 7.30. Sometimes I'm blessed when I watch it again later in the day. Well, Wendy, thank you for your patience for waiting while that satellite was finally hooked up. For those of you, by the way, who have DirecTV, you can go to channel 368, watch Hope Sabbath School in the United States or anywhere around the world. 
you can go to hopetv.org slash hopess. You can watch Hope Sabbath School with us. By the way, if you go to that website, you can also download our scripture song for this series. It's called You Shall Love the Lord Your God. And you can download the sheet music too. We're going to share the word of God together and be blessed. So I want to invite you to sing with us and uh, hide that word in your heart from Matthew chapter 22, 37 through 39. You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart. second is like it. You shall love your neighbor as yourself. You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, and with all your mind. This is the first and great commandment, and the second is like it. Shall love your neighbor as yourself. We're hiding this word of Jesus in our hearts. You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, and with all your mind. This is the first and great commandment, and the second is like it. You shall love your neighbor as yourself. You know, you think about this message, Christ and his law, that's really the summary right there. Amen. Love God with all your heart. Love your neighbor as yourself. And today, we're going to learn from the teaching of Jesus in his great sermon on the mount. Yes. And I'm so thankful, Stephanie, that you're willing to teach the lesson. And why don't you ask the Holy Spirit to guide us as we begin our study together today. Will do. Let's pray. Dear Heavenly Father, thank you so much for giving us the opportunity to study your word. We ask that you would teach us today and that when we leave this study, we would know that we have spent time with you. Amen. Thank you for hearing and answering our prayers in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 A study on Christ and the law the Sermon on the Mount. When you think of the Sermon on the Mount that spans Matthew chapter 5 through chapter 7, what is one of the most famous verses that you think of? Beatitudes. The Beatitudes. Mm -hmm. And yet Christ spends a lot of, a large portion on the law, and that's found in Matthew chapter 5, verse 17 through 48. So let's take a look at, at that. Matthew chapter 5, and we'll start with verse 17 and 18. And Jennifer, if you'd be willing to read those two verses, we want to see what does Christ say about the law here? Matthew chapter 5, verse 17 and 18. That's correct. And I'm reading from the New King James Version. Do not think that I have come to destroy the law or the prophets. I did not come to destroy, but to fulfill. For assuredly... I say to you, till heaven and earth pass away, one jot or one tittle will by no means pass from the law till all is fulfilled. Amen. 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 So what does it mean to fulfill? Hmm. Well, certainly, Any Stephanie, um, some, someone had said, maybe because he's rejecting religious tradition, uh, someone said, well, he's against the law too. So he's trying to tell them, I've not mm -hmm. come, mm -hmm. at least let's start with what I'm not going to do. You're asking what fulfill means, yes. but I haven't come to destroy it. Apparently mm -hmm. some people were saying that's, that's what he'd, he was trying to do. So he was coming to fulfill, to complete, mm -hmm. yes. yeah. Yeah. to complete, yeah. to bring to a point of perfection. Yeah. Yeah. That's what the, the Greek says. Let's, let's go on in verse 19 and 20 of Matthew 5. And Ulrich, would you read that for us? Matthew chapter 5, verse 18 and, I'm sorry, 19 and 20. 
Uh, reading from the New King James Version. Whosoever therefore breaks one of the least of these commandments and teaches men so shall be called least in the kingdom of heaven. But whoever does and teaches them, he shall be called great in the kingdom of heaven. For I say to you that unless your righteousness exceeds the righteousness of the scribes and the Pharisees, you will by no means enter the kingdom of heaven. Mm. Mm. Wow. Those two verses are packed, wouldn't you say? Mm -hmm. And I, I know that we covered this in a previous lesson, but I think it bears um, a good reason to go over it again. Yes. Mm -hmm. What is Christ saying in verse 20? There's something he's trying to point out. Nathan, what is that? If the Pharisees were respected religious leaders, there might have been some who said, well, if my righteousness needs to be greater than theirs, and they're already the most respected, there's no hope for me. But he made it clear that their righteousness, uh, we looked at it in a previous lesson, it was not what God expected of them. They were being hypocritical. They were acting one way, saying one thing and doing another. And so he's saying that's not the way to be, right? Exactly. Seth? I think that the, uh, the standard that the Pharisees set up uh, didn't go to the heart of the, uh, the law. And so uh, this is in essence saying that if you only go up to the point where the, the Pharisees reached, then you're just trying to measure up to them, which is mm -hmm. uh, not good. Mm -hmm. Yes. And we'll take one more comment, Jennifer, and then we're, we're going to touch on that, what did the righteousness of the scribes and Pharisees look like? Jennifer. And I love the way, because I think Jesus is amplifying what he said earlier in the Sermon on the Mount, because the Sermon on the Mount was focused on the interior. It was talking about, you know, the poor in spirit, those who mourn. Mm -hmm. But when you look at the Pharisees, they were only concerned about the external appearance. And so Jesus is saying, I want to take a journey and look into the heart of the people that I am trying to reach. Amen. That's, Amen. That is beautiful. Let's, let's look at Matthew 23, 23, because I, it touches on that as well. Kenneth, would you be willing to read Matthew 23, 23? And then we'll also read Luke 11, 39. Reading from the New King James Version. Woe to you, scribes and Pharisees, hypocrites, for you pay tithe of mint and anise and cumin and have neglected the weightier matters of the law, justice and mercy and faith. These you ought to have done without leaving the others undone. So what was the problem here in Matthew 23, 23? The, the more important thing that God is expecting them to do, they neglected it and then they were rather Majoring in the minor things. They were majoring in the minor things. Yeah. Ulrich. Uh, the three things that are listed there are justice, faith, and mercy. The, the true sense of those actions comes from within first. It's, it's uh, things that are expressed on the outside but starts within, in the heart. So Jesus is saying you're paying the tithes and this kind of uh, stuff, which is all good. But the justice... <laughs> Faith, mercy, showing love and kindness. You know, it was lacking. That was lacking. And he, he calls them hypocrites because outwardly you, you, you have the appearance, but in the heart you, you, you don't have it. I want to raise my yes. hand if I can and say, yes. were all of the Pharisees bad? Um, you know, was Nicodemus a Pharisee? He was part of that group. I mean, these were the religious leaders. Joseph of Arimathea. I think sometimes we... And, and Jesus perhaps block, lumps them all together because as a group, there was something wrong there. Mm. But, uh, you know, even the priests, I mean, many of them became obedient to the faith after Pentecost. Yeah. Mm. So I, I, I guess I just sort of raise my hand and say, you know, I think there were some who weren't just thinking about the external. Mm -hmm. They were sitting in the seat of Moses and truly representing the loving character of God. Thank you. But, but maybe not, not most of them, unfortunately. Absolutely. Yeah. <laughs> Let's look in Luke 11. Luke mm -hmm. chapter 11, verse 39. And I, I, I appreciate that point, Derek, because sometimes we, we 
put people all in the same box as you would. Mm -hmm. Luke chapter 11, verse 39. And Gloria, would you read that for us? Sure, I'm reading from the New King James Version, Luke chapter 11, verses 39. <laughs> then the Lord said to him, Now you Pharisees make the outside of the cup and the dish clean, but your inward part is full of greed and wickedness. Mm. Isn't this what Ulrich had mentioned? The outside had been cleansed, and the inside was not. Could we say that there was a head knowledge, mm -hmm. but there wasn't an experiential heart, mm -hmm. and a heart experience? Yeah. Yes, Chuck. You know, um, I had a, a friend of mine who illustrated it with cups. And if you have a cup that's dirty on the outside and clean on the inside, you'd rather have that one than one that's clean on the outside and dirty on the inside. Mm -hmm. uh, but quite frankly, the Pharisees had really clean cups on the outside. I mean, really clean. And you would look at it and it would be like, there's no way on earth my cup could ever be that clean. Mm -hmm. um, and Jesus is just revealing and pulling back the curtain and saying, now you gotta look at the inside. Th mm -hmm. There's an issue here. Mm -hmm. And I think that's important for us to help us better understand this Sermon on the Mount statement. Mm -hmm. Yes, see me so. I think I just want to match both what Derek said and the scriptures that there were deficiencies in the standard of righteousness and some were actually sufficiently righteous in our standards like Nicodemus but the Bible declares that our righteousness is like filthy rags mm -hmm. so it's that we take on Christ's righteousness and that is the standard of righteousness. Yes, Missy. I believe that they really did not understand the law. Uh, they saw it as something that they had to protect tr because of tradition, but the law should be a reflection of a mirror to ourselves so that we can turn to God. And they completely missed that. And if they understood the God connection, it would be a natural manifestation of a relationship to, to obey the law. So, and I think this leads us into our next segment. We know that the righteousness of the Pharisees wasn't going to get us, or didn't get them into the kingdom, mm -hmm. wouldn't get us into the kingdom. And verse 20 talks about a different righteousness, one that exceeds that of the righteousness of the Pharisees. Mm -hmm. Let's turn to Romans chapter 3, verse 21 and 22. We're going to look at three verses three different verses and see if we can find out what this righteousness looks like that exceeds that of the Pharisees. Charity, would you read Romans chapter 3, 21 and 22 for us? And I'll be reading from the New King James Version, Romans 3, verse 21 and, and 22. Yes. But now the righteousness of God apart from the laws law is revealed, being witnessed by the law of the prophets, even the righteousness of God through faith in Jesus Christ to all and on all who believe, for there is no difference. All right, and let's turn to Philippians chapter 3, verse 8 and 9. And Nathan, if you would, would mind reading that for us, that would be great. Philippians chapter 3, verse 8 and 9. Okay, this is from the New English Translation, Philippians 3, 8 and 9. More than that, I now regard all things as liabilities compared to the far greater value of knowing Christ Jesus, my Lord, for whom I have suffered the loss of all things. Indeed, I regard them as dung, that I may gain Christ and be found in Him, not because I have my own righteousness derived from the law, but because I have the righteousness that comes by way of Christ's faithfulness, a righteousness from God that is in fact based on Christ's faithfulness. Hmm. Amen. What do you see there? What kind of righteousness exceeds that of the scribes and Pharisees? Not something we can generate ourselves. <laughs> yeah. Kenneth. The righteousness that comes from Christ by faith. Yeah. Mm -hmm. By faith. Let's, let's look at one more verse, and then Jennifer will take that comment because I think this will give us further insight. Romans chapter 10, verses 1 through 3. And 
Ulrich, if you would be willing to read that for us. Yeah. Uh, reading from the New King James Version. Brethren, my heart desired and pray to God for Israel is that they may be saved. For I bear them witness that they have a zeal for God, but not according to knowledge. For they being ignorant of God's righteousness and seeking to establish their own righteousness have not submitted to the righteousness of God. Mm -hmm. Jennifer? I just wanted to kind of look back at what Missy raised earlier because I thought it was a really good point. I think what, what is becoming more and more clear as we're reading about you know, Christ and his law is that God's law reveals his character. Yes. Our reaction to it, our interpretation of it reveals our character. But in order for us to, you know, have this character of God, which allows us to follow his law, we have to get that new heart from Jesus. Hmm. Or otherwise, you know, the way we, you know, engage his law is going to be more representative of the flaws in our character than it will be, you know, what God has in mind for us. Mm -hmm. Amen. Hmm. Yes, Missy. I sometimes try to get a visual for this whole, the way it works. Trying to follow God's law without following God is like it, putting the cart before the horse. You have to know God first. You have to establish the relationship first. Yeah. And the following of God's law will become second nature. It'll be something we want to do out of love for him. Mm -hmm. Derek. I want to respond to something Nathan said earlier, and I think it's a really important point. When Jesus said it's got to exceed that of the Pharisees, some people went, well, that's impossible. I mean, these are the most righteous people I know. So we, we say Pharisee today and we think hypocrite, but back then those were the religious heroes of their day. So the, the reaction then that our righteousness must exceed that would be, that would take a miracle. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And the answer is, that's, that's the whole right. point. Yeah. It will right? take a miracle. It's going to take a miracle, and, yeah. and it's going to take a, a total change of heart. Mm -hmm. Yes. Not trying to save myself, but recognizing the grace of God through Jesus has already saved me, mm -hmm. and that he wants to change my heart. Back Amen. to the loving God with all my heart, mm -hmm. and loving those around me too. Yes. But, but it is going to take a miracle, because as he goes on to talk about the spirit of the law goes beyond the letter of the law, Mm. It's way beyond what we could do in our own ability. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And that's where, this is the foundation, what we've been sharing yeah. mm -hmm. is the foundation, I believe, for the rest of the Rome, our Matthew chapter 5, talking about going beyond the righteousness of the scribes and Pharisees, having it go beyond my, my head and actually hit my heart. Mm -hmm. So let's take a look at the first section of going beyond the letter of the law. And Matthew chapter 5, verse 21 through 26. And Chuck, would you read that for us? Sure. I'm reading from the King James Version. Ye have heard that it was said by them of old time, Thou shalt not kill, and whosoever shall kill shall be in danger of the judgment. But I say unto you, that whosoever is angry with his brother without a cause shall be in danger of the judgment. And whosoever shall say to his brother, Raka, shall be in danger of the council. But whosoever shall say, Thou fool, shall be in danger of hellfire. Therefore, if thou bring thy gift to the altar, and there rememberest that thy brother hath ought against thee, leave there thy gift before the altar, and go thy way. First, be reconciled to thy brother, and then come and offer thy gift. Agree with thine adversary quickly, while you are in the way with him lest at any time the adversary deliver thee to the judge, and the judge deliver thee to the officer, and thou be cast in prison. Verily I say unto thee, thou shalt by no means come out thence till thou hast paid the uttermost fathering. Mm -hmm. What is Jesus oh. trying to convey yeah. here? Charity. I think that what he's saying here is that they've taught you, um, the Pharisees have taught you that if you murder someone, if you do these acts, then that's when the judgment comes. But God says, even initiating it in your heart is mm -hmm. where I mm -hmm. begin judgment. Yes. The fact that you even, it, it, it almost seems like you need to kill for something to happen, but Jesus says, scratch that, go deeper. Mm. When you feel in your heart that you have an ought against someone, when you desire to um, do harm against them, 
that is where the problem lies. And that is where um, we'll start to yeah. deal with, um, help me out, yeah. friends. Mm -hmm. the, the root of the problem. The root of the problem. Yeah. Of the yeah. problem. Yeah. It's not just the act, but the intent of the heart. Mm. So what is the principle there then? Yeah. What is the what is the letter? Let's start out there. What is the letter of the law? Don't kill. Don't, Don't kill. Or treat and people with love and respect. Mm -hmm. Exactly. And, and, and you know, uh, Stephanie, there's nothing wrong with the letter of the law. Mm -hmm. you know, yeah. Some some people, even some Christians, say, "Well, I don't abide by the letter. Now I just follow the spirit of the law." And we're going to discover that that it was really to love others. As, Absolutely. But the, Jesus isn't saying, "Well, don't hate people, but it's okay to kill them." That's absurd. He's mm. not doing away with the letter. Mm. The letter is still true. Don't right. kill people, right? right? Yeah. Sure. But he's saying, I want you to go beyond that. Yeah. Mm. Yes. And, and I want you to not only not hate them or call them bad names, but yes. what is the fulfillment of the law? It's which, love. <laughs> mm. Which yeah. is to love your neighbor as yourself, yeah. right? Yeah, right? Back to love right. as God does. So I, you know, I, I think this is a really important topic because there are some Christians who get confused and say, well, I don't need to keep the letter of the law now. I just keep the spirit of the law. And it's like, no, it's this plus going beyond. Mm -hmm. And that's going to take a miracle. And it's not to save yourself. Mm -hmm. It's because you're in a living connection with God. So then my question would be, is it possible to keep the spirit of the law and not keep the letter of the law? No. Mm -hmm. no. 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 It's not, is it? No. Mm -hmm. No. Chuck. Well, I mean, definitely the spirit of the law is going further than the letter of the law. I was in a class... Uh, discussing the Sermon on the Mount, and there was a minister from Africa whose, whose church had been burnt down four times. And we were reading about this not hating enemies, and he said, wait a minute, how does this work? <laughs> Are you trying to say that I should, and I think you're probably discussing this later, but am I supposed to love them? And uh, where's this... For him, the letter of the law is easy. I'm not going to kill them when they burn down my church. Mm -hmm. But the letter of the spirit of the law is so much deeper. It's, it's if I can say it, it's mm -hmm. impossible. It would take a human, miracle. It would take a miracle <laughs> to make it happen. Without Jesus Christ in our hearts and him changing our hearts. Yeah. Yeah. Am I right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. let's, let's go on because we have a lot to cover here today. Let's look at Matthew 5, 27 through 32. Mm -hmm. And um, Simiso, would you read that for us? Matthew 5, 27 through 32. Sure, I'm reading from the New International Version. It says, you have had that it was said, you shall not commit adultery. But I tell you that anyone who looks at a woman lustfully has already committed adultery with her in his heart. If your right eye causes you to stumble, guard it out and throw it away. It is better for you to lose one part of your body than for your whole body to be thrown into hell. And if the right hand causes you to stumble, cut it off and throw it away. It is better for you to lose one part of your body than for your whole body to be thrown into hell. Mm. Through verse 32. It is said, anyone who divorces his wife will give her a certificate of divorce. But I tell you that anyone who divorces his wife, except for sexual immorality, makes her a victim of adultery. And anyone who marries a divorced woman commits adultery. Do you see a pattern here? Mm. Mm. You have heard that it hath been said, mm. But I say, what is Jesus trying to convey here? Yes. Um, I think, you know, Jesus is trying to give a deeper and um, more meaningful, you know, thing about this, the whole thing about the law of God. And I've heard a lot of, you know, I've heard from a lot of friends, Christians, they will look at this passage and they say, wait a minute, how is this even possible? You know, who, 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 can, who can go beyond this? And, and, and they put it in such a way that it is impossible. So forget about the law. But I think the whole point about, you know, Jesus mentioning this is that it's not just about, like uh, my friends already mentioned, it's not only about keeping the law externally, but keeping the law internally with the help of God. And I think Jesus is trying to say that it is possible with him. Amen. Absolutely. What would be the letter of the law here? Just to recap this, what is the letter of the law? Don't commit adultery. adultery. Don't commit adultery. What is the spirit of the law? Don't, Don't lust. How do we keep 
the spirit of the law in this media saturated society that we live in. Mm. How do we do that? Someone tell me how is this how Take is that miracle. possible? Yes. Guard the see. avenues of the soul. Yeah. By what we watch, by what we allow ourselves to be influenced by, our choices of uh, what we expose ourselves to. Mm -hmm. Yes. And I would respectfully say that's impossible. I, I know we can have good intention, but I would come back and say it's going to take a miracle of God, mm -hmm. really. Mm -hmm. uh, because you can be driving along and see some billboard with terrible things on it or mm -hmm. something can flash, uh, you know. We can have the best of intentions, mm -hmm. and I'm not saying we shouldn't try, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. but I think if we just kind of grid our teeth mm -hmm. and say, not, um, no, not only am I not going to break this commandment about adultery, but I'm not going to mm -hmm. have any of this, I've, I've got to say, God, I, I need a miracle here. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I need you to intervene mm -hmm. in a supernatural way mm -hmm. and, and, and give him permission to do that. So that, that opens up the, the question to me. There are certain things that we cannot control. Am I right? We have to drive. Mm -hmm. We have to go to the supermarket. Mm -hmm. How, let, and I'm going to, let's get practical here. Yeah. If you've been in a situation and you've realized, I need the grace of God. I need, Lord, to change my heart right now. Mm -hmm. I need help. I'm tempted. What did you do? What are some testimonies that you know of or that you've experienced yourself of mm. God's deliverance on this topic? Mm. Yes, Kenneth. You know, a friend of mine was an alcoholic and he gave himself to Christ. And you know, if we look at uh, this part of the world, how they have positioned this drunken bar, it's like when you are entering every city, it's just at the corner. So as he was driving, he get to a point, he felt that strong pull to go and then get something and drink. But he had made a promise to God that he, he doesn't want to live that kind of lifestyle. So he packed somewhere and then pray in his car and said, God, if you don't take over, I'm going straight to Oof. the bar mm. to drink. Wow. And immediately God gave him the strength. And that is the promise that Jesus gave us, that the indwelling Christ, which is the Holy Spirit, mm -hmm. when God gives it to us, everything that we don't have power over it is going to give us the strength mm -hmm. together with our will, and we will be an overcomer. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. It is all possible with God. Yes, Amen. Seth. Yes, I, I think just to add on to what Kenneth said, uh, it, I think we have to keep our focus on Jesus and his drawing power. Uh, is, is able to keep us. I mean, we can grit our teeth and, and you know, do everything in our own effort, but uh, I, I, I don't think, you know, just like Derek said, we, we can really achieve uh, the end of... Victory, you know, Jennifer. I like the verse that says, do not be conformed to the world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. So it's not just what you take away, but it's what you add. You mm -hmm. can't have an empty heart when temptation comes and be prepared to stand in the face of temptation. But you have to fill your heart with the Word of God and you have Amen. to have a life that's saturated with prayer. And it also helps to have positive you know, friendships with people who can support you Amen. in the time of need. So you're not standing alone you know, without the Word, without prayer. You, know, you have to fortify yourself. Amen. Very practical, very practical. No, Stephanie, yes, back to the whole, to this particular issue of, of guarding your heart and, yes. and immorality. Um, I had a, a young friend who was uh, widowed as a young adult. Mm -hmm. So he'd been married, had a wonderful relationship with his spouse, and, and boom, she's gone. And he fell into an addiction to online pornography. And he came, we talked, we prayed together. Now, I'm not saying when I say it's going to take a miracle, that doesn't mean God won't ask me to do anything. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But I am saying that the victory will be God's work. Yeah. It's Amen. beyond me. Yes. yes. So I gave him several options. I said, well, you could do this, accountability, friend, whatever, whatever. He came several months later, and he said, not only has God given me the victory, but I met this wonderful Christian young lady, and we've become friends. And I said, well, what did you do? He said, I totally disconnected from the Internet. Hmm. Amen. Now, someone might say, well, that's kind of radical. I mean, you know, you've got to work. And, but mm -hmm. the Holy Spirit knew his heart, knew his needs, loved him, 
and said, this is what's going to work for you. And so, Amen. you see, again, he's not trying to work the miracle himself. Mm -hmm. He's letting God work the miracle, yes. but it may involve some obedience on his part. Absolutely. And, and in doing that, which someone might say, well, that's kind of radical, like cutting off your hand or pulling out your eye. But God knew that's what he needed. And God gave him the victory, which Amen. was not only pleasing to God, but preparing him mm -hmm. for a beautiful relationship with a Christian mm -hmm. young woman. Mm -hmm. So God is awesome. God Amen. is amazing. Amen. Amen. Thank you for sharing that. I appreciate that. Let's move on to our next section, Matthew 5, 33 to 37. And Nathan, would you read that for us? Sure. I'm reading from the New English Translation. Again, you have heard that it was said to an older generation, do not break an oath, but fulfill your vows to the Lord. But I say to you, do not take oaths at all, not by heaven, because it is the throne of God, not by earth, because it is his footstool, and not by Jerusalem, because it is the city of the great king. Do not take an oath by your head, because you are not able to make one hair white or black. Mm -hmm. Let your word be yes, yes, or no, no. More than this is from the evil one. Amen. Mm. What can we learn from Jesus' comments here? What do you well, see, Nathan? I, I just, you know, you see a pattern. You have heard yes. what I say. And I think that's one reason why somebody could say that, well, Jesus is contra uh, contradicting the law because he's saying, you've heard what Moses shared, but I say, as, and when we hear but, we usually think contradiction. And we've already established it. He's saying, but I'm going beyond that. Absolutely. He's like the new Moses, and Matthew's presenting him that way, writing to mostly a Jewish audience. Moses gave the law from the mountaintop. Jesus is now on the mount, and he's giving the, a discourse on the law, and he's showing them it goes so much deeper. You've heard this, but you didn't really hear it the way that God wanted you to hear it. And I want to take you deeper and show you your word should be your word. You don't need to add anything more to it because then you're going, you know, anything from that other than what God gave you is coming from the evil one. Fulfill the promises that you have given yes. to God. Yes, yes Jennifer. Yes. And, and there, you know, the commandment that says, thou shalt not bear false witness. You know, as followers of Jesus, people shouldn't have to look at our fingers to make sure they're crossed or <laughs> make sure we super swear or sign something or, you know, in order for us to not, you know, bear false witness or be dishonest. So Jesus is saying, just be honest. Don't have, you know, don't make people make sure you set the magic word first <laughs> you know, before you can be held accountable in that way. Could we say that's the heart of the matter? Yeah. Okay. That we need to be honest. Yeah. We think of the story of Ananias and Sapphira, mm -hmm. and we won't go and read that story right now for the sake of time, but you remember they had made a promise, and what happened? Hmm. They, lied. They, they, lied. They, lied. they lied. They lied. They were lying to the Holy Spirit. <laughs> and what happened? Death. They died. It's important to keep our promises. Why is it important to keep those promises, especially to God, Kenneth? Because first of all, God did not force us to make those promises. We decided to make that promise to God. And because of his namesake, we ought to fulfill those promises. Otherwise, people will take God you know, for granted and then do whatever. Because whatever we do, if we are the light of the world, we are setting an example for others to see. So if you want the world to treat God right, we have to first set a standard how we ought to treat God. Mm -hmm. Yes. You know, I, I have to, a confession to make. I, used to, I really misunderstood this story. I thought they lied. They didn't give what they were supposed to, and God killed them. But actually, the text doesn't say that. Uh, their lie is exposed. Peter says, you've not lied to man, but to God. Mm -hmm. exactly. And they drop dead. Mm -hmm. You know, the Bible talks about your heart failing you for fear. Yeah. It's like you've been caught out. Now, who among us, maybe when we were little, we told the, the problem with telling a lie is then you have to tell another lie to try to cover That's it. True. And like, you're never done. And you never really know, well, did I say that or not? That's why back to the, the basic principle is just say the truth. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Just speak clearly. They, did, they could have said, we're just giving part of the money. Mm -hmm. That was okay. No one was requiring it anyway. Okay. Exactly. Uh, but I just want to make sure we don't get this picture of God going smash because they didn't give the full amount. They're, we're damaging ourselves. Mm -hmm when we move away from God's plan for our lives. Yes. And then we're living in fear. That's what they were doing. 
And when they were caught, their fear, I believe, is what killed them. Mm -hmm. And they drop dead, and it's like, you know what? I don't, I don't want to live like that. Just be honest. Just be honest and just speak the truth. Mm -hmm. Yes, thank you. Mm -hmm. One more comment, and we're yeah, going to move um, on. Uh, in this verse, I, I find this, you know, the word saying, do not swear using heaven or God's name. I have a friend, uh, he's a refugee from Burma. Uh, in order to come to the States, you have to pass to, through all the tests from the United Nations. And just before, the, you know, back to li a little bit about his story, he suffered a little bit in Burma, of course, from the military government. But he added a little more into the story, which wasn't really his story. And before he came to the States, he had to, you know, put his hand on the Bible and, and you know, tell the people that I'm telling the truth. He did that. He, he was fine. But after he got here, he told me that since then he has been feeling guilty inside. Mm -hmm. Something has been haunting him. You know, you did something bad. You know, this is not the right thing to do. Now he, he's trying to, you know, um, make it back to God. You know, I, I'm sure God has forgiven him. But the thing is that he has been feeling so guilty about it. <laughs> wow, and that's uh, something that we all struggle with, don't mm -hmm. we? Yeah. Yeah. And we need to ask God, forgive me if we believe that he's, we've done wrong, mm -hmm. and then claim the promise that as we ask for forgiveness, he brings that forgiveness, right? Mm -hmm. And I'm sorry, we have to move on because the best is yet to come. <laughs> so uh, Matthew chapter 5, 38 through 42 and Gloria, would you read that for us? Sure. I'll be reading from the New King James Version, Matthew chapter 5, verses 38 to 42. You have heard that it was said, an eye for an eye and a tooth for a tooth. But I tell you not to resist an evil person. But whoever slaps you on the, but whoever slaps you on your right cheek, turn the other to him also. If anyone wants to sue you and take away your tunic, let him have your cloak also. And whoever compels you to go one mile, go with him too. Give to him who asks you, and from him who wants to borrow from you, do not turn away. Amen. Is Jesus asking the impossible? Yes. He is. Tell me about that. <laughs> I mean, I'm looking at this, and an eye for an eye and tooth for a tooth. I mean, this just makes so much sense in our judicial system. Um, it, it, it has a good, I think it's important inside a civic a civil law but i'm looking at it, someone coming to me who's treating me wrong and taking things from me and i say okay take some more this is just not human <laughs> so what does it take what does it take to turn the other cheek when someone has slapped you in the in the cheek or has done you wrong they've done you wrong what does it take a miracle to turn around <laughs> a, miracle. a miracle okay you know, I think my fear, it says if someone wants to borrow something, you know, <laughs> that you should just lend it to them. And I'm like, that, that just doesn't make sense to me. But what I don't understand if I'm looking from that human perspective is when my entire life is totally surrendered to God. Yes. Mm -hmm. He's going to direct that course. You know, understand what I'm saying? Yes. So he's going to lead the right person who really needs me to do that. Because I say, well, not everybody who comes up to me when I'm stopped at a traffic light deserves me to give them half of what's in my wallet. Sure. Yeah. I think it's just a totally different way of living. Mm -hmm. Being wise. It, no, no, I'm talking about totally, <laughs> no, no, that's the human way mm -hmm. to be wise. wise. I, I think a totally different way of living, Stephanie, is where I say, God, my life is totally <clears throat> at your disposal. Yes. Because mm -hmm. if this goes by human logic, this doesn't work. Mm. But if you are going to be Lord of all, and I'm just going to love you with all my heart and love those around me, you're going to have to safeguard all of that. Mm -hmm. the, the, the way you lead, you know, lead me in the paths of righteousness for your name's sake. Amen. That's the only way it's going to work. Yeah. Could we say being wise in God's wisdom, that he's teaching us, and we're, he's speaking to us, and we're being attentive to his, his will. Lord, do I do it here? Where... Who do I meet? How does this work, Jennifer? I was just going to add, I think, you know, we also look at the teachings of, of 
Paul when he talks about the purpose of the government, you know, to enforce the law, and, and it's something that God set up. And so if someone is going around burglarizing people's cars and punching people and slapping them, you know, maybe it's not for me to exercise vigilante justice and go out there and, you know, take care of it myself. But, you know, I think it, it, there is an appropriate place for, you know, calling the police and making sure that this person has an opportunity to turn their life around and to have some mm -hmm. consequences to that type of behavior. And certainly be praying in the, absolutely throughout all of that. Mm -hmm. and. The remainder of the, the chapter, thank you, Jennifer, uh, Matthew chapter 5, verse 43 to 48. Mm -hmm. And Kenneth, would you read that for us? Yeah. Reading from the New King James Version. You have heard that it was said, you shall love your neighbor and hate your enemy. But I say to you, love your enemies, bless those who curse you, do good to those who hate you, and pray for those who spitefully use you and persecute you, that you may be the sons of your Father in heaven. For he make his sun rise on the evil and on the good, and send rain on the just and the unjust. For if you love those who love you, what reward have you? Mm. Do not even the tax collectors do the same? And if you greet your brethren only, what do you do more than others? Do not even the tax collectors do so? Therefore, you shall be perfect, just as your Father in heaven is perfect. Mm. 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 What drastic change is Jesus calling for here? <laughs> and if you can sum it up in just one sentence, go ahead, Seth, tell me. I, I think the, the instruction is totally counterintuitive, you know, going by our human nature, but, but it assumes a different value system, which is what Jesus exemplified in his life, you know. Uh, dying on the cross and, and uh, praying for his enemies. And, I mean, in fact, his whole life on this earth hmm. illustrated that. And Christ he asked us to live us. like that. Mm -hmm. Yes, please. I just want to give one example with my story. I, um, back in high school days, I went to India to study, you know, two years. But in my first year, um, I was bullied for being a foreigner. Uh, I don't want to mention the things that my friends did to me. Uh, getting practical, it is difficult to love, you know, those who hate me and bully me all the time. Uh, but one thing that I always, you know, try to keep with myself was that don't try to take revenge. Leave it that to God. And, at, you know, at the end of the year and now looking at back, you know, those days, I kind of see that, you know, those experiences made me a stronger person somehow. So one thing that I've learned was that, you know, ask God to help you not to take revenge on those who hate you and do bad things to you. Very good point. Mm. So this is something, again, that takes a miracle, doesn't it? Yeah. Because how do you love someone who's cursing you? Mm. How do you love someone who despitefully uses you? Mm. How do you pray for your enemies? And, and I know there's some comments here. I just want to get to the heart of the matter. Let's turn to... Matthew 22, verse 36 to 40. What is Jesus saying about love? What else does he say about love? And we keep coming back to this, these verses. And Charity, would you be able to read that for us? Matthew 22. Yes. Um, 36 to 40. 36 to 40, and I'm reading from the New King James Version. Teacher, which of these commandments? Teacher, which, which is the great commandment in the law? Jesus said to him, You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart and your, all your soul and all your mind. This is the first and great commandment, and the second is like it. You shall love your neighbor as yourself. On these two commandments hang all the law of the prophets. Again, mm -hmm. God is saying, love me, love God with all, all, your, all your heart, heart. Right. and love your neighbor oh. as yourself. Mm -hmm. Let's turn to Romans chapter 13, verse 8 through 10. And Ulrich, would you read that for us? Romans 13, chapters, I'm sorry, chapter 13, verse 8 through 10. Okay, reading from the New King James Version. It reads, Owe no one anything except to love one another, 
For he who loves another has fulfilled the law. Okay. For the commandments, you shall not commit adultery, you shall not murder, you shall not steal, you shall not bear false witness, you shall not covet. And if there is any other commandment, are all summed up in this saying, namely, you shall love your neighbor as yourself. Love does no harm to a neighbor. Therefore, love is the fulfillment of the law. Amen. Okay, let me ask you, what is the fulfillment of the law? Love. 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 Have you heard about the fulfillment of the law somewhere? Jesus. In our Jesus. Jesus said Jesus. Matthew 5. In Matthew 5. Let's go back to 17, yeah. verse 17. Let's look there. And Ulrich, would you continue on and read Matthew 5, verse 17 for us? Reading Talking Matthew chapter 5, verse 17 yes. in the New King James Version. Do not think that I came to destroy the law or the prophets. I did not come to destroy, but to fulfill. Mm. 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 So Jesus came to fulfill uh -huh. yes. the law. Which is and what is the fulfilling of the law? Love. 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 Mm. That's right. All right. So, and I, I just want to follow with me this thought process, okay? We've talked about the righteousness of the scribes and the Pharisees and going beyond that, that something, a miracle would have to happen, right? Mm -hmm. Our hearts would have to be changed. Mm -hmm. So it's gone from my head to my heart. Mm -hmm. When that happens and Jesus Christ is living in me, my heart is changed. Then I love God. Mm -hmm. And because of that love, I'm loving my neighbor as myself. Are you with me? Mm -hmm. That's right. And I am fulfilling the law. Mm -hmm. Let's take it a step further. Someone else sees that. Mm -hmm. And it causes them to look to Jesus. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You see, friends, it's beyond me. Yes. Mm -hmm. That's right. Following the law and keeping the law is not just a head knowledge. Mm -hmm. It touches my heart that touches everyone around me. Amen. It's no longer a checklist of what Stephanie did, but it's a tool for outreach. Amen. Mm -hmm. Did you catch what I yeah. said? Yes. It's a tool for outreach. It's God working in me and through me to reach mm -hmm. the lives of other people. Mm -hmm. Amen. Yes, all right. I think, let me add to what you just said. I think that's why before he begun this section here between talking about the law and, and, and the Beatitudes, there's a section there where he talks about um, the followers of God being the light of the world mm -hmm. and the yes. salt of the earth. Because, as you said, you're influencing people. That is one thing that, as human beings, we cannot get away from. We're mm -hmm. not an island. No man is an island. You're going to influence someone either in a positive way or in a negative way. Mm -hmm. And here Jesus is saying they can keep the law, yes, but their law keeping is just empty righteousness because there is no heart transformation attached to what they're doing. It's just a checklist. But when your heart is changed, that miracle that happens within, when Christ mm -hmm. is enthroned within, now what you do stems from a heart that is transformed. And when people see you, they see Christ. Yes, yes. And I Derek. want to raise my hand. Yes. Let some people misinterpret Paul when he says love is the fulfillment of the law and say, so I can commit adultery, I can kill, I can lie, I can break the Sabbath, I can take God's name in vain as long as I love. No, no. What Jesus is saying is that when the heart is transformed, I go beyond Mm. the letter of the law. Yes. Mm -hmm. I, don't, I don't abolish it, but I go beyond it to the deeper meaning, which is, which is to love, oh, here we go again, love God with all your heart, yes. mm -hmm. and, and to love your neighbor. That's the heart of it. And, and that will be manifested not only in keeping these commandments, mm -hmm. but in, in going beyond that to a deeper love, That's which, right. as you said, is a huge witness, changes lives. That's mm -hmm. right. Yes. Mm -hmm. Someone who's had an experience with a person who has changed your life because you've seen how their 
experiential knowledge of the law has changed them. Do you have a, a testimony of someone who's changed your life? You've seen that. You've seen a person, an example of someone who has allowed the word of God, the law, mm -hmm. to not just be a head knowledge, but to be something that changed their heart. Yeah. Chuck. An example that comes to my mind is my father. I remember as a kid, I would travel with him. He was a salesman. And there were some people who treated him so unkind, uh, cursing him out and other things that would take place. And I'd watch how he'd respond. He was always kind. He was always patient. They would say all kinds of mean things. And at the end of the time that he was spending with them, they would end up being kind and treating him nice and respectful. And I, I always wondered, how in the world could he do that? I mean, it's, it was against, totally against what I'm normally like. I'm not that kind of person. But I could see that. And I wanted that kind of living. I wanted that kind of experience where God's love so filled my heart that I could just be kind to people regardless of the circumstance that I was in. Amen. So you would say that God had infiltrated his heart and he had love for God and that permeated to love for his fellow men. Absolutely. Powerful. And that's what it's all about. That love to God that changes the heart and extends out to those around us. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Stephanie, thanks for a great Bible study. And that is a miracle, isn't it? Yeah. Uh, it, it can happen for sons and daughters too, uh, where we see that miracle happen. And, and you've challenged us today again. And thank God for the simple teaching of Jesus, yes. to love God with all our hearts and love our neighbor. And do you want that miracle in your life? I know I want it in mine. I want, I want God to go so far beyond my natural strength and talent that I'll just be amazed and say glory to God Amen. and know that God can work a miracle not only in me but through me. Let's pray for that miracle in each of our lives today. Our Father in heaven, thank you for this challenging study for the teaching of Jesus about the law in the Sermon on the Mount, uh, telling us not to abandon the letter of the law, but to go beyond it to the fulfillment yes. of the law, which is to love you with all of our hearts and to love those around us. Lord, let that miracle happen in our lives, not so we'll be famous or popular, but so that your name can be honored in the earth and lives around us can be blessed. This is our prayer in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Thanks for joining us for Hope Sabbath School today. If you've missed any in this series, you can go to our website hopetv.org slash hope ss you can download the scripture song you can watch past programs and then continue to learn about the miracle that god wants to perform in your life and once you've seen that happen please do not keep it to yourself but share that wonderful message with those around you Amen. Amen.